So right, H- Hampstead Heath car park. Yeah. On a, now on we a Monday do look. Midday. Yeah, we look like we might be here for shenanigans. They are Christmas trees that people have dumped. Oh yeah. Is it official? Christmas oh yeah, trees. look, because they've been look, they've been they've been shredding them. Ah, uh, they use. This them is where the Christmas trees go to die. We've found Christmas tree. The graveyard. elephant's graveyard of Christmas trees. That's a wasteful thing, isn't it? Christmas trees. I mean, we did it. We do it every year, but it's just. I burn mine. I was going to chop mine up and then just burn it, but I couldn't be bothered, and the council came and took them away. So. I um, the first year I I did do that, and the kids saw they were really um, they were really upset because they felt like we sort of killed a pet. Mm. But then. But then this insane tradition of going. I tell you what, everybody should have. Everyone should have. It's tradition. Everyone should have a dead tree in their house for a bit. Yeah. And it'll it'll leaf. just drop sharp, pointy, messy bits all over your floor. But you can that only guy, do it. That guy is sizing you up, I swear to it. He's just gone straight past really closely in his yeah, Prius. Yeah, he was having a little look. Are we that something that he may want to engage with in a dogging situation? Otherwise, why would you drive so close? That was got a really whole close. car park. Yeah, why was that? That was, was a now, that scared. was a browse. He's got mismatching wheels. He was not. browsing. What are you saying that you would happily engage in sexual congress with him, <laughs> except that you couldn't because it was mismatching wheels and it'd be on your mind the whole time. You'd be like, oh, why didn't he just get a new he trim? Got, has he got fog lights on, or are they just daytime? They might be. They might be DRLs. I don't know. I am not. I'm not. Oh, we're no. going to move. We're going to get out of here. Have you ever been dogging? No. Oh, have I you? Have, oh, I have. When? Four, Why? Four times. What? Yeah, for a feature, an investigative journalism feature. <laughs> many years ago, okay? And trust me, it is not sexual uh, in a good way. Uh, it's creepy. Really creepy. I'd love to pretend I'm shocked at this news, but I'm not. I mean, it's just, okay, it's then. so unsavoury. Well, it's, a, it's, a, it's, not, it's not news. And um, one of the times I went, I took uh, one of my colleagues from the office, who's a female... Um, because I wanted to make it look more realistic, like I was intending to do stuff. And I got a hire car because I thought I'd keep it nice and anonymous and had a, a brand new Ford Focus hire car. Yeah. And we pulled over into the 24 hour Tesco's just before we went to the, dog, the well known dogging spot. Mm-hmm. So we went to grab a bit of food from Tesco before going to the dogging spot for this feature. Yeah. And as we were sitting in the car eating a bowl of pasta, a stoned 16-year-old in a Kia Pride that was stolen um, rammed us. What? Smashed the whole front off this hire car that I'd had for about 12 minutes. And I got out of the car and sprinted after him. He weaved across the car park, hit another three cars and then hit a wall. I pulled him out of the car and uh, called the police. And he'd, he was stoned with his girlfriend who was screaming and she was about 14. Yeah. And they'd gone into Tesco's um, stolen a bottle of whiskey and uh, and like a t-shirt and then done a getaway in a car they stole about 40 miles up the road a Kia Pride like the old school old Kia Pride. Pride yeah like 12 inch wheels Kia Pride oh yeah and um, and then smashed into a load of cars and he was stoned he was so off his face he couldn't really stand up that's like a Hansel and Gretel house but that would really take the shine off the dogging see that there see that car under a cover yeah that is one of those Sultan of Brunei Aston Martins what? Yeah, you know the ones they sort of made like sort of five based on a DB7 and five based on a, based on a Vanquish, but yeah. all for the Sultan of Brunei and his what was his brother Prince Ken or whatever he is that Prince Ken. Yeah, I think Prince Jeffrey. <laughs> um, and um, he really is called Prince Jeffrey. Is and he, he was the one Prince Jeffrey? Prince Jeffrey, and he was the one who actually used to commission all the cars. And basically, there's a link here. Prince Jeffrey and and the Sultan of Brunei and their thirst for exclusive bespoke cars kept Bentley alive in the 90s. Without the Sultan of Brunei, we'd not be sitting here today in this Bentley. Is that true? That is true because they had, and you can look them up, all of these Brunei spec Bentleys that were bespoke, they had, uh, the, the weirdest one actually, there's been a Bentley 4x4 in the past called the Dominator and it was really a Range Rover underneath but restyled to look like a Bentley and retrimmed with a Bentley-esque interior. Yeah, I've heard of the Dominator, yeah. A Brunei commission and of course they could cream off a lot. I mean some of them were actually bespoke or pretty much brand new cars so there had to be an R&D budget, there had to be development. So they were stinging 
Sultan of Brunei and his brother Jeff for millions, billions of pounds. And it's only that that kept Bentley in business and Rolls Royce pre the uh, VW and, and yeah, BMW yeah. coming along and buying yeah. up all the bits. That's insane. Yeah. So that we brilliant. wouldn't be we wouldn't be here today without uh, the Sultan spec. of Brunei and Prince Jeffrey. It's apt that we're driving this car around the Hampstead Heath, uh, North London area, because that is where old W.O. Bentley was born and bred. I looked up last night, he was born on 78 Avenue Road. Avenue Road? Avenue Road, which is at St John's Wood, I think it is. Yeah, I know where that is. Well, that's where he was born. Really? He was the ninth child. What? Of his parents. Yeah, the ninth Holy child. Shit. We're in we uh, a world of pain we're here. We're never going to get out of here. We're never going to reverse out of here successfully. Does your wife ever do this to you? My wife does it a lot, where she'll just email or ring me and she'll go, what are you doing on the 22nd of April? Yeah, go, and she wants an answer there. I have no idea. I yeah. don't really know what I'm doing tomorrow. Yeah, And, I, and uh, I, 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 I think it's because she has excellent diary management skills and I have very poor diary management skills, but yeah. Ditto. She, yeah, and she, yeah, she wants an instant answer. Or then she'll say, what are you doing on the 22nd of April? I'll go, I have no idea. she go, good, put it in your diary. Uh, I'm going, I'm we're going, we're going for dinner with some. So, oh yeah, or oh, I'm going out. I'm, I'm going fly out. fishing with Janet Ellis, and uh, and I'll go. But what? That's like two, three months away. Look at this removal lorry that's just flashed us through. It's got a lovely arrange of array of old badges. Yeah. Which, which is actually a relevant chat because on the list, of, when I was looking through the online configurator of this car, yeah, you can buy. You know the huge Union Jack plaques. Yeah. That the old Bentleys used to have. Yeah. You can buy them. For this car, can you? As an option from there. Yeah. By the way, there's a Suzuki Jimny back there. Another we're in one. Well heeled part of London. I know, but see, this is again, we're a bit. Oh, look, there's a VW Phaeton, and it's the facelift model. Oh, oh listen. 